Before we get into the news, I just want to take a moment to wish everyone watching a very happy Christmas. This is the last Ledger Life video before I take a short break and from the 23rd through to Monday, I'll be offline spending time away from the screen. Thank you for sticking with the channel through the year. Your support, comments and messages genuinely matter. If you find Ledger Life useful and you would like to support the work, there is donation details in the description. It helps keep the research independent and the coverage consistent, especially during quieter market periods. All right, let's get into it. We are starting with developments around OnKI, which has confirmed a shift to a single token structure for its SNS. Under this plan, the ecosystem will unify around OnKI, with fun AI transitioning into it. This decision comes after weeks of open discussion within the community, where governance, incentives, and long-term sustainable theme were debated at length. What's worth highlighting here is that this was not presented as a finished idea from day one. According to the team, the change is the result of sustained community feedback rather than a fixed internal roadmap. Concerns were raised around complexity and alignment under a dual token setup, particularly around how governance rights and economic incentives might drift apart over time. That feedback pushed the project to rethink how its SNS governance token and its proof of AI work model could function together. The outcome is a single framework that blends elements of a traditional SNS governance token with a mined token structure inspired by Bitcoin style economics. On paper, the aim is to reduce friction while keeping incentives in place for governance participation, developer contributions, and ongoing funding. The ONIC AI team has framed this as an attempt to align a wide group of stakeholders. That includes early SNS sale participants, existing fund AI users, developers building on the protocol, contributors, and the wider decentralized AI community. By consolidating under one token, the project hopes participation becomes easier to understand and easier to maintain. That said, the team has also been clear that this is not a simple change. Combining two economic models comes with trade-offs, particularly around token supply dynamics, reward distribution, and governance influence. Whether the structure holds up will depend less on the announcement itself and more on how it performs once it is live and under real usage pressure. An updated white paper has been released alongside the announcement, outlining the proposed path forward and sharing additional resources for those assessing how they want to engage with the project. Importantly, the move has been positioned as an invitation to continue shaping the platform rather than as a final or untouchable design. As decentralized AI projects continue experimenting with funding and governance structures, OnKI's single token approach becomes another live case study. Adoption, developer interest, and sustained community involvement will ultimately decide whether the model works in practice. Next up, a tool that's likely to catch the attention of Motoko developers working on beta heavy applications. ZenDB has been released as an embedded document database designed to run directly inside internet computer canisters. Its aim is to make large-scale data handling more approachable by offering a MongoDB-style query experience while relying on stable memory rather than the limited heap. This matters because the internet computer's heap is capped at 6 GB. For many developers, that limitation has meant moving towards multi-canister architectures or building custom storage layers, both of which introduce complexity and maintenance overhead. ZenDB takes a different approach by using stable memory as its primary store. That allows datasets to grow into the hundreds of gigabytes within a single canister. The trade-off is higher instruction cost per write, something the developer behind ZenDB has been open about from the start. From a functionality standpoint, ZenDB offers a document-oriented API with support for nested records, schema validation, secondary indexes, and complex queries. 
Developers don't need to manually manage memory layouts, serialization, or indexing logic. Queries can include range filters, logical conditions, and pagination, with the database handling query planning internally. To test whether this works beyond theory, the developer built a live application indexing the full history of internet computer transactions. More than 31 million ledger transactions were stored and queried from a single canister using ZenDB. After tuning index configurations and navigating instruction limits, the system reached a steady indexing rate of around 5,000 transactions per minute. The total cycle cost to index the full dataset came in just under 500 trillion cycles, with the majority consumed by the database canister itself. What's refreshing here is the level of transparency. ZenDB is not being positioned as a universal replacement for simpler data structures. For smaller data sets or straightforward key value access patterns, traditional heap-based solutions may still make more sense. ZenDB is aimed at read-heavy workloads like archives, analytics dashboards, historical logs, and long-term data sets that benefit from complex queries over time. It keeps both data and logic inside the canister, reducing reliance on external infrastructure. There are clear limitations, multi-field sorting, aggregations, and full-text search are not yet supported. Schema changes require manual migration. Index design remains the responsibility of the developer and poorly chosen indexes can still trigger instruction limits. Stable memory deallocation is another non-issue, meaning unused memory from dropped indexes cannot currently be reclaimed. Even with those constraints, ZenDB reflects a broader push within the ICP ecosystem to lower the barrier for building serious data-driven applications without fragmenting architecture across multiple services. Staying with ICP, fresh community shared data is offering a clearer picture of how the network is evolving beneath the surface. Using historical data sets made publicly available by IC Terminal, analysts have been looking at exchange balances, on-chain storage usage, and the distribution of ICP holders. Access to free historical data has been widely welcomed, especially by independent researchers and content creators who want to move beyond short-term price commentary. One area of focus has been ICP balances held on exchanges versus price action since Genesis. While the data itself does not draw firm conclusions, it provides a foundation for analyzing how exchange-held supply has shifted over time and whether those shifts correlate with broader market behavior. On-chain metrics also show continued growth in canister state, which is closely tied to decentralized storage usage. Supporters see this as evidence that applications are actively using the network for computation and data storage, rather than treating it purely as a settlement layer. Projects like Caffeine AI are often referenced here as they rely on decentralized storage to keep application data directly on-chain. At the same time, critics point out that rising storage use needs to be weighed against cost and genuine adoption rather than being treated as an automatic positive. The data also breaks down ICP address counts across different balance ranges. The largest group of addresses holds less than one ICP, running into the millions. As balances increase, the number of addresses drops sharply, with a much smaller group holding large amounts. This pattern is familiar across most public blockchains. A wide base of small holders sits alongside a narrower group with substantial balances, raising ongoing questions around decentralization, governance influence, and long-term incentives. Taken together, these figures don't offer simple answers about value or future price direction. What they do offer is raw material for more informed discussion, particularly when combined with longer-term analysis rather than short-term noise. Finally, a quick look at infrastructure. The internet computer has expanded its storage capacity from around 50 GB per subnet at launch to roughly 2 TB per subnet now. 
with 47 subnets live that equates to about 94 TB of fully replicated storage across the network. Fully replicated storage means every node in a subnet holds the same data, prioritizing resilience, availability, and verifiability. For applications that need strong guarantees around data integrity and uptime, that design remains central to ICP's value proposition. At the same time, the platform is preparing to introduce distributed storage for static assets that do not require direct smart contract access. This is a recognition that replicated storage, while powerful, is also costly in terms of infrastructure and cycles. By separating data that needs tight coupling with computation from data that does not, developers gain more flexibility. Media files, archives, and static content can move to distributed storage, while core application state remains fully replicated. Skeptics rightly point out that large storage figures alone do not guarantee adoption. Competing platforms often lean on off-chain solutions that are cheaper and familiar, even if they offer weaker guarantees. The challenge for the internet computer will be to show that its growing storage capacity, combined with its smart contract model, which offers enough practical benefits to justify a different way of building apps. Before wrapping up, a quick reminder. If you value this kind of coverage, there is donation details in the description. It helps keep Ledger Life independent and consistent. Also, make sure to check out the latest Ledger Life newsletter and the project links and resources listed below. Once again, happy Christmas to everyone watching. Thanks for the support through the year and I'll see you after the break. Take care.